So I was sent this, the Ultra HD benchmark from Spears and Munsell. This is the new basically standard on how to calibrate your, your display, whether it's a TV or a projector. And I've been kind of struggling with how to actually review this because it's not like it's a movie where you can just talk about the movie. There is a ton of stuff on this disc. I mean, there's three discs in here and each disc is loaded with options and menus that you can go into and just customize to your heart's desire for your display. So obviously I can't show you every single thing on all three discs because one, that would take absolutely forever. It would be like this huge, massive file size and it would just take too long. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda give you a little bit of a rundown on the first disc and show you some of the stuff that's on there so you can get an idea of how different this is from the previous version, just the HD version. And you know, if, if you're in the Ultra HD, 4K, Dolby Vision, you know, HDR10, HDR10 Plus ecosystem and you have all your components and you really want to step up your display to that next level, then I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit of what's on disc one and then, you know, maybe talk a little bit about a couple things that are on disc two and disc three because again, there's just so, so, so many things on each of these discs. So why don't I go ahead and pop in disc one and show you guys some of the stuff that's on disc one. But before we do that, let me show you what you get when you actually purchase this Spears and Munsell Ultra HD benchmark disc. So obviously you get three discs, but inside you also get a, I believe this is a blue filter that you get to use with. And there, there are sections on the disc where it will call for this. And I, I think you don't really have to use it. Like I don't think it's necessary, but it's probably good to use this. So it's cool that they give you that. So, and then there's three discs. Now one disc I already have in my Blu-ray player and then you get two other discs. Hopefully you guys can, can see that right. So this again is just an excellent tool to use to fine tune your system. You know, we've got the spatial audio calibration toolkit and now we have this. So there's really no excuse for you to have, you know, an in game setup with audio and video. But as I said, let's go ahead and pop this in the disc. I already have disc one and the Blu-ray player and show you some of the stuff that's on disc one. All right. So when we put the disc in, this is what we're greeted with. So you've got a bunch of options that you can select from. Now, disc one, there are really like four main sections with disc one. You have video format, peak luminance, audio format, and Dolby Vision analysis. And the most important setting is going to be your video format, which can be set to HDR10, HDR10 Plus, or Dolby Vision that you see here. And you see those check marks next to the formats that the player and the TV report that they support. So you can basically go in and customize this to your display, whether it's HDR10, HDR10 Plus, or Dolby Vision. So it's recommended first to set the video format to HDR10, and then you can circle back and redo those calibrations with the other video formats you know, that your home theater supports. Next is peak luminance. And when the video format is set to HDR10, the peak luminance level can be changed with this menu. And you should set this to the closest match to your display's actual peak luminance. So if you don't know your display's peak luminance for like a flat panel display, then you can set it to 1000. Or for a projector, you wanna set it to 350. Now the audio format setting on the Ultra HD disc is used for AV sync patterns. Now you probably won't have to mess with this but if for some reason you are having AV sync issues, then this is where you could test that. And then the final setting is Dolby Vision Analysis. And this setting applies to the patterns in the analysis section of the disc and only when the video format is set to Dolby Vision. So it should be set to Perceptual, which is the default. So under Video Setup, you have your baseline. And you've got a bunch of options that you can go in and customize. You've got brightness, contrast, color and tint, sharpness, color tint, Framing, bias light, color space evaluation, color space evaluation HFR, and color space evaluation HD. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this because it's pretty dark on the screen, but under brightness, you want to control or adjust the brightness, which raises and lowers both the black level and the peak brightness of the display. 
and when you display the brightness pattern you want to look for four vertical stripes in the center of the image and you know if you can't see four stripes then you would increase the brightness control until you can so under contrast it's going to display the contrast pattern which includes a series of blinking numbered rectangles so you want to lower the tv's contrast control until all of the rectangles are visible and if for some reason you can't make all the rectangles visible no matter how the you know low the contrast is then you would lower it until as many rectangles as possible are visible now once you have all the rectangles visible then increase the contrast control until at least one rectangle disappears and then you can lower it one notch to bring back the rectangles that just disappeared all right so this is sharpness and the basic process for setting sharpness is to turn it up until artifacts appear and then turn it back down until the artifacts aren't visible anymore and the intent is to make the picture as sharp as you can get it without causing annoying picture issues and you know you're probably going to do this with your projector when you first turn it on you have to adjust all those settings but this is nice to have because you actually have an actual you know reference disc to use if you want to just fine tune that sharpness this is the color intent section it's pretty self-explanatory Number one says use a filter that makes the left bars turn black. Number two, adjust color until these match when viewed through filter. And three, adjust tint until these match when viewed through filter. And by filter, I'm talking about the blue filter that comes in the package that I showed you earlier. So under the AV sync section, you have your frame rates. You have 23.976 or 24. That's also called that sometimes 59 or 60 frames per second. You have continuous side by side to side sync one two calibration sync one two and then you have resolution ultra hd and hd so under advanced video this section contains patterns that are useful for pretty much professionals and enthusiasts who want to evaluate and adjust you know advanced video characteristics and these patterns assume that you have a fairly advanced knowledge of video fundamentals so you've got evaluation evaluation color Evaluation, you know, contains patterns useful for evaluating common scaling, sharpness, and contrast. Evaluation color contains patterns useful for evaluating common color related quality and performance issues found in a lot of video displays. Ramps contains a variety of different ramps, which are patterns that have a rectangle with a gradient from one brightness level to another, or one color to another, or both. And then under resolution, this section contains patterns that are useful for testing the effective resolution of the display. Aspect ratio sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? It contains patterns that are useful for testing that the display is correctly displaying different aspect ratio content, especially when you're using an anamorphic lens or you know some other type of complex projection system. And it can also be useful to help set up advanced masking systems on projection screens. So, a lot of stuff in here that you can do under panel this contains patterns that are useful for testing aspects of o oled and lcd panels contrast ratio contains patterns that are useful for measuring display contrast pca contains patterns that are useful for measuring perceptual contrast adl contains patterns useful for measuring contrast while maintaining constant average display luminance or ADL motion contains patterns that are useful for evaluating resolution and other performance characteristics in moving video motion HFR contains patterns that are useful for evaluating resolution and other performance characteristics in moving video and specialty contains patterns that are useful for evaluating how players and displays are affected by Adobe Vision and HDR10 metadata changes now selecting HDR10 plus from the configuration subsection will result in an HDR10 format. So under analysis, you've got grayscale, which will show simple grayscale fields in windows for calibration and evaluation purposes. You've got CD and M2. And this section contains patterns that show grayscale fields at specific luminance levels. And under peak versus size, this section contains fields of different sizes, which given in percentages of screen areas are covered at a peak luminance of 10,000. And color checker contains fields that display the colors and grayscales used on the color checker card, which is, it's designed to be used by basically automated, automated calibration software. Saturation sweeps contains saturation sweeps useful for automated calibration software. 
and gamut contains gamut patterns used for automated calibration software. So a lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you if you go into any of these sections, it's going to walk you through it and you know, it comes with a pamphlet that will also guide you through it as well. So again, guys, this is only disk 1. And again, I can't go through every single section on this disk or on both disks because it'll just be too much. There's a lot of stuff in here that goes way over my head and it would probably take me hours to go through and show you everything. But I just wanted kind of to give you guys a taste a taste of what you know this new Ultra HD benchmark calibration disk can do and some of the stuff that's on here. But you know, very, very useful tool. I'm looking forward to getting into this and really fine tuning my projector, especially since, you know, I'm not a calibrator and, you know, right now I'm using the Epson LS12000B, which can be Calumon calibrated, but I don't know anybody that does that. So having this tool is awesome because you can, you know, save a lot of money and do it yourself and, you know, learn a lot in the process. That was a lot. And again, you know, I didn't actually dive into each sub menu. You know, I tried to do a little bit in the beginning of the video, but there's just so, so much stuff on this disc. And honestly, some of the stuff is way over my head. I'm going to have to go in there and, you know, fine tune some of the stuff. If your system is pretty good, you may not have to do a lot, but the fact that they give you so many tools to actually just, I mean, fine tune every single thing that you can on your display is amazing. So disc two, you know, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to go into a deep dive on that as well, but just to kind of give you an idea of what's on the other discs. So disc two, and I have their little like pamphlet or manual, whatever this is called, but on disc two, it has HDR demonstration material and skin tones. So you can really fine tune those, you know, skin tones. Sometimes your display, when you get it, it may not be calibrated right. You know, they have the film mode and the cinema mode. Each manufacturer is different where you, you know, it's basically you just put it on that, that picture profile and you really don't have to do anything. But if you feel like you're not happy and you want to go in there and, you know, fix some of the skin tones, you can do that on this too. They also have a motion section, skin tones, and you have your demonstration material where you can probably actually just play some material and then go into your, you know, your menu and your settings of your display and adjust. And then on disc three, you have SDR patterns and audio calibration and video setup and then some more advanced audio oh sorry some more advanced video so Spears and Munsell Ultra HD benchmark excellent tool again it is a great time to be a home theater enthusiast you know 30 years ago they didn't have this stuff you know when I first started getting into home theater they didn't have a lot of this stuff so really cool really awesome that we have this for video specific mainly and then we have the spatial audio calibration toolkit so that's going to do it for the overview of the spears and munsell ultra hd benchmark let me know down in the comments if you guys have already picked up your copy or if you're planning on picking up your copy and if you have it or if you do get it then let me know what you think and if you see any difference from this version and previous version, obviously there is a big difference because this one is focused on Ultra HD and Dolby Vision and HDR10, HDR10 Plus and stuff like that. But let me know if you find value not only in this disc, but also in this video by hitting the subscribe button if you're not already and hitting the like button and sharing this video if you found it helpful. As always, no matter where you're at in your home theater journey, make sure you enjoy it. For Hater Rate Cowboy Cinema, I'm Hater Rate Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.